Cells evolve. The cells which supply the demand of the world the best are the ones that live on. Supply and demand, while a human concept, is not something decided upon. The market is not decided upon. The market just is. The market is just a description of something that happens. The cells, of course, work just fine, and they form all sorts of complex, self-regulating, emergent structures. The individual cells and the higher structures they form change from time to time, which is evolution. Perhaps one day all these oscillations will end, and supply will perfectly meet demand, but I wouldn't hold my breath, and it may not even be possible. Life and the entire universe may just be cyclical, but I'm not too interested in that right now. Viruses infect these cells. Now, viruses can't move themselves. They can't metabolize anything, and so are just particles floating around. The connection mechanism from the virus to the cell just has to do with attractive and repellent forces and having the right shaped tips for the receptor sites. The virus doesn't move on its own metabolized energy. Once infected, the virus inserts information into the cell, causing the cell to behave in a way beneficial to the virus. Because after all, viruses compete on the free market just like anything else. And the viruses that reproduce themselves the best are the ones we see today. Viruses that immediately kill their host ended up not being the best at reproducing, and so viruses that infect cells but give the cells enough freedom to reproduce tended to be the best. The more libertarian viruses outperformed the totalitarian viruses, which is why viruses that instantly kill are a little bit rare. In fact, some viruses perform functions beneficial to the cell, creating a symbiotic relationship, and so not all viruses are bad as a human would see it. Once the virus has infected a few host cells, it can then use those cells to attack other cells. Although, really, the virus isn't doing anything. The virus itself cannot directly coerce other cells, so even the coercion of cells depends on deceiving other cells who then do the coercing. When we speak of a state, we are speaking of something analogous to a virus. I had for a time viewed the state as an organism, but I think it's incorrect. The state is more like a virus. The virus of the state is a series of neural connections that cause people to believe in state. What this neural cluster is, or even how localized in different parts of the brain it is, or how different it is from person to person, is not something I'm interested in. But save it to say, a belief in the state results from some sort of neural organization, and so the state is maintained by this neural organization in all of its variations. Just like the virus infecting the cell, the state infecting the mind involves adding information. The biological virus adds information to the DNA, and the ideological virus adds information to the neural cluster. The state does this through propaganda of some sort. In the old days, it was the church saying that you have a feudal bond, and the Lord wants you to work for the Lord, or something like that. And today, it's primarily through the education camps. The host of the ideological virus then speaks and acts in a manner that promotes the state. Now keep in mind that this does not mean people running around going, golly gee, I sure do love the state, but it's more subtle than that. It's more like the state is necessary for certain functions, like defense, safety, and health regulations, regulating monopolies. It's necessary evil or something like that which is perfect for sustaining the state, the ideological virus, because just as having a cell become completely engulfed by the virus will destroy the cell, leaving the virus without a host, the total state would destroy the economy, resulting in people dismantling the state and putting forth a new one. Just as a middle ground of exploitation is best for the reproduction of the virus, a middle ground of intervention is the best for the ideological virus of the state. Now, the virus of the state has many strains. You have nationalistic strains, communist strains, but the strain that seems to have won out today is a mixture of nationalism and communism coupled with these arguments about public goods. In the old days, the state was justified by religion. The state was the agency claimed to manifest God's will. Eventually, that morphed into something about a social contract. Then that became justified by democracy and the state being the will of the people. Of course, if it's the will of the people, then why the state is needed at all is, ever, is never addressed. One reason the United States virus was so successful was that early on it was incredibly small. A person could live their entire life in the United States and never have direct contact with an agent of the state. And so the population flourished and boomed, and growth was fantastic. And so these constitutionalists and minarchists are simply people who hark back to the very early days of the virus, when the virus was just kind of laying dormant within the South. As a kid, 
when you were sent to the principal's office, did it ever seem surreal? What would the principal's office look like? What kind of man must this be? What deep and arcane wisdom must he possess to run an organization as large as, at the time, an elementary school? And what deep and arcane wisdom must the president, the congress, the cabinet, the governors all have to run an organization as large and powerful as the federal government? The truth is, not much at all. There are no scientists furiously working away to try to figure out how to make education better. The regulators of the financial system, the Treasury Department, and the Federal Reserve all work with absurd and asinine economic assumptions that can be debunked by any uh, novice economist or, you know, most libertarian. C-SPAN shows us just how much deliberation goes into the bills being passed. The state is not some awesome entity in its own right. It has simply been assumed power because everyone believes in it. It's just the manifestation of this ideological virus. You can build roads. It's not hard. You know, gravel and asphalt and maybe some paint for the lanes or however you want to set up the lanes. You can generate your own electricity for about 600 bucks. You can get a solar panel that generates 200 watts and lasts for 20 years. You can purify your own water. You can transport your own water. You can create your own movies. You can print your own books. You can create your own nerve gas so that nobody would ever want to mess with you. You can create your own currency backed by gold or whatever thing you want to back it by which is all easily bought. All these things can be done by an individual person and can be done even more efficiently with the division of labor that emerges from a free market. These are simple tasks. They're not magic and a state is not necessary for them to be done. Your body evolved to function on its own and your brain evolved to function on its own and it is the most amazing thing on the planet. You don't need a 200 year old magic scroll to make your life better. That's just the virus talking. Now once identified, actually destroying the virus is not problematic at all. The virus isn't even alive, and all of the grandeur, the leviathan of the state, is nothing more than the grandeur of the people it has infected. The monuments weren't created by the state, they were created by those it infected. The state is a chimera, and as you get closer to it, it becomes smaller and smaller until it just completely fades away. Or more appropriately, you realize it's not really there. You may have noticed that I'm not all there myself. 